Selection Pane, System Browser. In this section, we would like to introduce you to the Selection Pane or System Browser. As the name suggests, we have the possibility to select objects or to browse in the system, as we know it from Windows File Explorer. There are different ways of looking at a building management system. The system browser displays objects in the building management system through various views that you can select from a drop-down list. Views provide different ways to look at the system. Please note that the views require read permissions defined in the user profile and that it is possible that the views or objects of a view are invisible to your user. The standard views are management view and application view. The management view is where we get all relevant information of the management system, divided into the three subchapters, field networks, management system itself, and system settings. In this area, the system relevant settings and configurations for a project are made by engineering experts. Only experts are granted the necessary read and write rights to carry out the required settings. In the application view, all applications included in this project and their contents are listed in alphabetically order. The number of applications varies on the number and type of integrated disciplines. During this tutorial, we will return to the application view from time to time. The third view is the logical view, which is also the most used view in practice. This view reflects the integration of all disciplines, in most cases. Dezigo CC is an integrated building management platform that is open by design and allows the integration of single or multiple disciplines. In the system, the integration of these disciplines, or subsystems, is mapped in the logical view. In practically all projects, subsystems are integrated and consequently the logical view could also be called one of the standard views. In other words, the objects visible in the logical view represent the integrated subsystems of Siemens and also of third parties. When planning and programming the subsystem, a hierarchical structure can and often is defined in projects, representing the project with location or area, building, floor and perhaps discipline. Following this hierarchical structure, one finds the product-specific solutions, whose objects can also be represented in hierarchical form. In our demo project example, we first have the network name, then three objects, two of which represent buildings B and B1, and the third object contains global objects. Building B contains all the plants for the various disciplines, from access control, ventilation, cooling and so on. In the hierarchical structure of the air handling unit, we find a ventilation system, which is subdivided into child objects but also further various sub-hierarchical objects that represent aggregates such as extract air or supply air fan, humidifier, preheater, etc. When opening the preheater, we have the same principle with the child objects and the pump aggregate. The same principle is applied to the other disciplines. Building B1 instead, represents a commercial building with five floors and with different office spaces per floor. Every time we select an object in the system browser, the view in the primary pane is updated. In our case, with the associated room overview of the object room 202. Without an associated graphics page, the current values are displayed in the textual viewer in table format. Another example, we want to know what the supply air temperature of the air conditioning system is. We browse to this data point or object and select it. This opens the graphic viewer showing the air conditioning system where the object is associated to, and the supply air temperature we are looking for is outlined with a red box. Also here, during this tutorial, we will return to the logical view from time to time. Dezigo CCs also allows us to create additional custom views, should you find yourself with more views. In our demo project, customer view is a typical view. Using filters helps us minimize the number of objects displayed in a search, making it easier to find objects in a large system. You access the filtering features by selecting the filter icon. The filter area consists of search box and search scopes which allow entering a wild carded text string and a selection of search scopes by description, name or alias. 
The technical name and description of the objects visible in Dezigo CC are configured in the subsystem and retained by the import into Dezigo CC. In this example, the APLT is the name and ventilation and air conditioning plants the object's description, both created in the subsystem and imported into Dezigo CC. Subsystems also allows to configure a customer-specific, preferred, optional user designation. This customer designation is defined as an alias in the Dezigo CC. As seen here, no customer designations have been defined in our demo project. The feature search within limits the search within the current selection in system browser, in our example it would within the air handling unit. The different dropdowns allow filtering by discipline, object type and object state. The number of disciplines displayed depends on the number and type of imported subsystems and can therefore vary. There is also the possibility to select individual sub-disciplines and narrow down the search even further. Here it is possible to filter by object type. The number of disciplines displayed depends on the number and type of imported subsystems and can vary. In state, the system offers us to filter by alarm suppression, which means that all data points where alarm suppression is enabled are displayed. Let's make a few examples. We enter room 108 in the search box and run the search by clicking on the green tick. We get a successful result, and at the top, we find a tag that we search with the description of room 108. In the result we can see that the name of this room is R underline 108. Let's clear the search, change the scope from description to name and enter room 108 in the search field again. This time the search failed. If we repeat the search by entering R underline 108, we are successful again. This shows how important the combination of scope type and text string used is for a positive result. Next, we select description and enter room 2 with asterisks in the search box and get the list of all room numbers from 201 to 222. We select room 206 which automatically opens the graphic page in the primary pane. We send the room 211 to the secondary pane and collapse the selection pane to have a better view of both rooms which gives us the possibility to compare both room situations. When I show the selection pane again and delete the search tag, I return to the system browser view. If the room designations on the site have been applied to several buildings, the search can be filtered with additional filtering on one building or area, as in this example on building B1. We select the feature search within and therefore restrict the search to building B1. This time we use room 21 with asterisks as a search term and as a result we get the listing of rooms 210 to 219. Successful search criteria can be saved with a name. We select the filter icon again, click on the save icon, define a name, and click on the save icon again. We leave the filter action and return to the system browser. The next time we use the filter, we can recall the saved and the last filterings in preset filters. Simply select saved filter and start search. Certain situations on a site sometimes require that alarm suppression has been activated for certain objects. The Dezigo CC Flex client allows you to find these objects efficiently with a specially designed filter and to remove the suppression very easily with the help of the right panel. You will find detailed information on this in the event treatment chapter. If we reduce the size of the pane in the selection pane from the default, the navigation type adapts to the selected size as seen in this example. The primary and secondary panes behave in a similar way. During this tutorial, we will return to the logical view many times. In the next video, we would like to introduce you to the graphic concept and navigation of the Flex client.